Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Sunday market update. I wanted to make this video really quickly for you guys because player of the year is coming today. That's gonna to be the main point of this video, kind of a last minute um, player of the year talking about investments, um, You know, looking at VVD, looking at Sterling cards, uh, since those are kind of the two specials to win this award, the two most, uh, you know, I think the, the people that, um, the most projected players to win this award, I think it's going to be Sterling and VVD. We'll look at some other players today as well, but a lot of people have invested for those two cards, and with those SBCs probably coming tonight at uh, midnight UK after the award ceremony, um, obviously you're going to know who wins the award, and then you'll know what SBCs will be coming out. So this is kind of a fun game that we get to play each year with this Player of the Year stuff. Um, a lot of people have been looking at Sterling and have been looking at uh, Virgil van Dyke for Sterling as Young Player of the Year and VVD as Player of the Year. Now, we're not going to actually know until the ceremony, the results are released and everything like that. Um, but a lot of these informed prices, prices will react to who is voted for the winner. Um, who you know? Who maybe does not win and stuff like that. So let's say Sterling is the winner of Young Player of the Year. A lot of people have invested in the 88 and the 89, the Inform, because in years past there's always been a special card requirement. As you see here, there's actually a lot of people probably invested in Sterling a lot, like back in here in this time frame. I know a lot of people that have been invested in Sterling's in a long for a long time, um, and he kind of hit a low this week or this. A couple days ago, actually yesterday, 148. Um, so that was a, a really low point for this card. Now, if you're invested in this card, I don't know where you got it at. He's 160 right now, both consoles. I don't know. If you got him for lower than that, you're making money. I might just stay content and take the money um, because the way, and this is what I want to talk about today concerning SBCs. The real question is with these SBCs are going to be possible is how much they come out and cost in the SBC section. Now, yes, we can speculate, we can look at who wins the award and that's gonna change some prices and that's gonna impact the market, but it all comes down to how expensive and how much EA values these SBCs that they're gonna put out for player of the year and young player of the year. Now, obviously, if we get a, a Raheem Sterling card, obviously his highest rated card this year on foot is a 92 rated. He just got this team of the group stage card, um, 92 rated card. If they boost him up, let's say his team of the season would probably be somewhere like a 94 to a 96. Somewhere in that range, I would guess, would be his team of the season rating. Um, and that's what this card will be. These player of the year and young player of the year award winner cards will have the same stats as their team of the season cards that will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. We've seen that in years past. That's something that we know is true. So basically when you're doing this SBC, you're getting the player of the year card, you're getting that card design, but the stats are the same as the team of the season and that's where we have to look at the value of the SBC and kind of really look and see is this SBC worth it based on the rating of the card and this is going to be his tots card and maybe if you just want the cool dynamic image and the card design that's why you would do this SBC but EA makes you pay more coins for that because it is an SBC we're right before team of the season and they're definitely trying to suck some coins um, off the market now Speaking of a couple different things, I want to look specifically at VVD because I think he has a really good chance to win and a lot of people have invested for him. But as I mentioned in yesterday's video, um, I think he has a very interesting situation on hand with all of his special cards and the rating areas that he has. This actually might be easier to see on Footbin. If we go back over here, you show, I'm showing you guys right now the team of the year, which is down a lot. Look at this. He was down at 1068 on Xbox right now. All right, or on, on Thursday, right now he's 1090. I think you could, you could see more panic selling of this tomorrow leading up to the awards ceremony of people that are thinking he's going to win and they think they're gonna do the SBC. I'm really curious to see what they do with this rating if they make him a 94 rated because he obviously has a 93 and his team of the year is a 95. Will they jump over the team of the year's rating and make him like a 96 or a 97? Or will they keep him under the team of the year and stick him at a 94. My personal thinking on this is, I think they're gonna give him a 94, but I could be totally wrong. We really just have to see what EA wants to do and if Van Dyke wins the award. If he doesn't win the award and you see panic selling on this team of the year card or any special version of Van Dyke, 
go and pick that up because this is such a special card. He's going to get panic sold. And even though the market is in such a, a, a down point right now, there's definitely going to be people that are buying back this card to play with, especially on the lower tier ends here. Maybe look at the foot birthday card being 397k. I mean, if you see this drop down to like 325 in, in some panic selling, um, or maybe this inform dropping down to, you know, in the 200s, under 300k, that would be something that I would look at for a possible panic sell and then, you know, an investment to flip in the rebound. But regardless, it really just depends on what they value and what rating they give this DVD card and how much they make the SBC cost. Um, if they give VVD a, a 94 rated card and they make the SBC cost 700k, you're probably going to see this team of the year dip down in value a decent amount because this one's over a million coins and if it's one stat rating less but 300,000 coins cheaper to do the SBC you're going to have people that are going to go out and do the SBC probably that's my thinking just because it's the second best version of Van Dyke and it's considerably cheaper some people might even be able to do it for 500k with untradables in their club that's why I like I'm going to watch this card for sure this weekend tomorrow today actually today um, and just kind of watch his card card price along with the investments for these cards. Now, again, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, if you're invested for a lot of this stuff, the special cards for Van Dyke, the special cards for Sterling, like the Informs, the UCLs, any special card that people are investing in, I would sell that into the hype. Sell that tomorrow. Actually sell it probably as early as you can as more people because more people are going to start selling into the hype. Yes, you could lose out on an opportunity to make a lot of coins, um, but I'm always a, a fan and a proponent of selling into the hype. Now, if if you just bought him and you bought one to just cover yourself to make sure if he gets in because you want to do the SBC, that's a case where you hold. But if you're mass selling these Sterling cards, if you have tons of the Sterlings or tons of the Van Dykes, I would be very, very careful. Now, if they get announced and they actually do win, their special cards will shoot up very quickly for a point in time. That's going to be your opportunity to get out. I mean, we saw it last year with Neymar. Um, his cards, his informs went from like 600K, his cheapest informs. They went up to almost like 800, 900,000 coins, some of them almost a million at one point. Um, because people went and did that SBC. It was just a crazy, crazy SBC, and he was not projected to win, so his informs and special cards weren't inflated. But Van Dyke and Sterling are projected to win, so there are a lot of people that have invested in this card, in these cards, even though it's not super duper inflated in price, there's still a lot of these um, that are overpriced in my opinion and they're just kind of hovering there. They haven't dropped yet and that just shows you that there are people investing in them. Now, let's say Van Dyke does not win. You're going to see those cards go crashing, crashing down and that will present an opportunity for another Neymar-like situation last year. Um, let's say Aguero wins. I don't think that they would, they could require a special version of Aguero. He only has an inform in the UCL, and this inform is very rare, so I would not see that likely. But I would see like a gold card requirement likely for, for a guy like Aguero. I think I overshot his gold card there, 70K. You see about 70K? Maybe like 65,000 coins, somewhere in that range. And that could be something where this gold Aguero card, if it gets required, could shoot up over 150,000 coins, just depending on the SBC, um, and you know they're going to make this this SBC pretty expensive because the way that they have been valuing SBCs in this pre-team of the season period is they've really been juicing up the price. They've really made you pay a premium for some of these cards. This Otteries card, I wouldn't pay any more than like 25 or 30k for that. Basically a discard 87 rated, and you get a, you get to try out the card maybe for a couple games. Guedes, same thing, maybe. 40 or 50k for that type of card, um, but they're just requiring way too too much for some of these. Erickson is interesting because he probably will get a team of the season that will be better than this. Um, but I'm a Spurs fan, so that one, I haven't done that SBC yet. It's tempting me. I probably won't do it though. But regardless of that, they've been really overpricing the SBCs, making you pay a lot, and that's in a time period where you know if we go over here to cheapest players by rating on Footbin. A lot of the higher rateds are down in price from where they have been in weeks past. We have 85s under 10K, we have 86s under 20, and we have the 87s and 88s still lingering, but coming down, these are a lot lower than they used than they were in, in the previous weeks during the Icon SBC hype. So a lot of these SBCs are actually 
really expensive if you put them, these high rated gold players back to their previous prices. The SBCs that we're seeing right now that are being put out um, are pretty expensive. Now let's say EA makes this SBC expensive tomorrow and the high rated gold prices are low. I mean, that gold that, that SBC price is gonna be very expensive because you're gonna have inform shooting up, you're gonna have requirements shooting up in price. I mean, these are SBCs that people wanna do. So just the valuation of the SBC is the thing that I'm most interested to see tomorrow from EA. But again, if you're holding any cards that are um, like Premier League informs or you know the English informs, or gold cards like Otamendi, Ederson, you know, uh, maybe some Liverpool 86 rated like a Mane or, or a Firmino or a, Fabinho, a Fernandinho, so I'm thinking of, I might just hold on to those. They're high rated, so they're still in demand for other SBCs, and these informs really haven't moved too much, and you know, they really only have the option to go up further, so I don't see um, selling into the hype for the SBC stuff, you know, like the the high rated golds and the informs that you may have invested in um, that are not informs of that specific player that you think is going to win i think those are fine to keep and to hold on to because those can really only go up with more sbcs that we get um, at the least at the worst they stay stagnant and you and you're chilling and you just have to sell for um for break even after tax or something like that so other than that, I mean, I think a lot of these cards are going to be sought after for people. The Whoever wins the award, if, if, if a Hazard or an Aguero or maybe even Bernardo Silva picks up an award, that's going to be a special SBC um, that people are going to want to go and do. So if you have any indication of you think who's going to win based on um, that or maybe the leaks that come out, I'm not condoning leaks or anything like that, but if you see stuff on Twitter... Um, just be careful with that uh, today as well. There's going to be people who are saying that, oh, this person is a surprise winner and they're going to try to hype some things up or you just can't always believe the things that you see coming out of the news um, right away. So the player of the year is the big thing for today and I wanted to make this video kind of just a last minute thoughts about player of the year. Um, and again, watch out for that team of the year Van Dyke. Watch out for those high rated Van Dykes and, and obviously the special cards for all of these guys um, because they could be kind of fluctuating in price a lot tomorrow. And if you time it correctly, if you can figure out who wins the award right away, somebody like this Hazard, if he wins the award, I could maybe see a special Hazard required, but I would more likely see the gold a requirement for that as well, just because he's so high rated, he doesn't have a lot of icon, or not icon, but he doesn't have a lot of inform cards on the market. So that's just something to kind of keep your just keep your eyes out for, keep watching. Um, and it should be a fun day of player of the year hype and a lot of SBC hype, always a fun time of the year as we're still awaiting the great grand team of the season announcement from EA Sports. If you enjoyed this video, smash a thumbs up on it, comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's been Nate, the Foot Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.